Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Bayer Crop Science and CNMC. I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. Here today for an episode of Wheat School with Mike Palmier of MNP Ag Intellect. And we're going to be talking about salinity and kosha. So welcome, Mike. It's wonderful to see you again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, so we're talking about salinity and kosha. First of all, how do those two things tie together? Well, so I guess how they tie together, let's just talk about the origin of salinity and why we have these types of saline soils. And, and really, it boils down to the, the fact that it's a, a water issue and that we have a high water table within these areas with a high level of salts. And so as soon as you have that, then we tend to get a lot worse plant establishment and lost competition in those areas. Kosha is actually quite saline tolerant uh, for a weed. You'll generally see for weeds in a saline area, you'll have kosha as well as foxtail barley if it's present. Uh, and kosha doesn't like competition, but in these areas it has less competition, so it actually does quite well. Right. And that's such a strange fact that it doesn't like competition with how prolific it is. Yeah. Yeah. So what does that look like in the field when it comes to <laughs> kosha? I'm going to go off on a little bit of a rabbit trail there. Yeah, so I mean, as far as what it looks like in the field, um, so again, if we don't have a lot of competition in these areas, I mean, the goal within a saline area is to try to get as much plants established as possible mm -hmm. uh, to be able to limit some of that spread of, of kochia specifically. Uh, when you don't, I mean, that's basically all it is is kochia, and then, and then kochia can get quite competitive when it gets larger, right? As soon as it starts branching out and gets above the crop, then you're in trouble. Uh, so in these areas, when they go off the rails, it's generally all kosha. Right. And what's happening? So, I mean, we see the white above the ground, as we can see here. Um, what's actually happening below the ground? You mentioned the water <laughs> table. What impact does that have? What does that look like? Yeah. So with the high water table and higher salts, what happens uh, is uh, if you don't get a good crop established over time, and this really came to light when in this area we were doing lots of summer follow and chem follow, then the water will evaporate. And as the water evaporates and moves throughout that soil and into the atmosphere, what it does is leave behind those salts on the surface. So over time, you're getting less and less establishment of a crop in these areas, you're getting more evaporation, and that leads to, to worse salinity. So the things that we can mitigate in order to try to lessen that would be to, to have a crop here, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to uh, tr uh, have water transpiration throughout that crop, less evaporation in those areas. Uh, as well, by having more competition, we limit the weed set, uh, the weed seed set, uh, and we can try to get ahead of it a little bit that way. But at the end of the day, it is a water issue, so you can mask it, you can manage it, but the only way to really cure it long term is to be able to deal with the excess water in, in the ground. Right. And you mentioned having a crop here. So what crops would grow well in the saline soils? <laughs> So I'll maybe start with which ones do very poorly. Right. Uh, so pulse crops uh, really struggle with, with high salts. And so in these areas, if we went through here and see the lentil crop uh, right away, we would get next to no establishment, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'd have a kosher problem. Uh, as far as crops that do handle lots of uh, salts, I mean, barley is probably the number one for us uh, as far as uh, an annual crop that can handle high levels of salts. Uh, as well, there are specific grasses. If you would re if you would seed these areas into uh, a forage, uh, there are specific types of grasses that can handle lots of salts. Uh, if you're trying to get some alfalfa established and it's moderately or slightly saline, uh, a salt master, a salt tolerant type alfalfa would be your best bet. If it's heavily saline, even that's not going to establish. It's going to be those grasses. Right. And what impact does tillage have on saline soil? <laughs> So tillage is probably the worst thing you can do in these areas because as soon as you till that soil and you have that brown, uh, that bare dirt and that brown ground, uh, that increases the evaporation rates, uh, which again leaves more salts in the surface. So um, I've always known, you know, I've always been told throughout my career and all the research points to the fact that you we should not till our soils, our saline soils. Uh, and I would still say when I travel through in the fall that probably 90% of the salinity gets tilled in the fall yet. And so what, why they're doing that is they're trying to uh, manage the weeds mm -hmm. uh, and we, the kosher gets away from them and so they try to manage it through tillage. While in reality, the, the best way in my opinion to manage that at that time would be to, to mow those kosher plants down or weed plants down, try to uh, m maintain, you know, if there's going to be kosher, it's, mu it's much easier to manage when it's in that one spot where you know exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. And kosher has a problem in the fact that 
uh, later on in the fall, it tends to break off and spread all throughout the rest of the field. So if you can stop that from happening, you're, you're way better off. Uh, and an odd thing about that too, is if I had the choice between having absolutely nothing growing in saline area or weeds, I'd probably would rather have weeds if you could manage the seed set and the mm -hmm. dispersal, because at least then you're eliminating the evaporation still, which causes more issues long-term. With the saline soils. And so if you were to give producers a top three best management practices <coughs> to deal with saline soils, what would they be? Well, so the number one is uh, minimize your fertility and your expenditures in these areas. They are very much limited, not by fertility, uh, or water availability or anything, they're limited by salts. Uh, so your responsiveness to a pound of uh, added and applied fertilizer is basically zero. Uh, so as much as I can, I like to just shut off the, the fertilizer in these areas. And what I do then is increase the seeding rate mm -hmm. to try to get more establishment. We have higher seedling mortality in these areas than the rest of the field. So we need to increase the seeding rate to try to get full establishment in limit evaporation. Uh, and uh, those types of things and trying to manage some of the sitting water in these areas will uh, at the very least make it so that the salinity doesn't get any worse and over time you know you can inch away at trying to drive it down uh, a little bit deeper and, and get slightly better establishment of crops. Right that's terrific well I want to thank you so much for joining us and that was Mike Palmier on Real Agriculture.